Hey everybody, this is just gonna be a quick video. It doesn't really count as one of our own. I just wanna do a quick uh, announcement update and Rogue One review. Updates. A while back we had some issues with the Jedi Living website, jediliving.com in case you don't know, and that has been resolved. That was an issue with our hosting service that is resolved, so everything's up and running. Someone has asked for the Jedi Code meditation to be done in an hour long format. That is coming. It is on the to-do list. It will get done, I promise. I'm, I'm sorry for the delay. I just kind of want to rework the video and put that out there. Likewise, we do have other videos coming. They are in the works, so hopefully we'll get those out on time. I will look to film them today. Okay, so we have an announcement. I worked with NBC and Saber Guild, the Prime Temple chapter, on an episode about Star Wars and the impact that it had. When I have more information on when this episode will be out and where you can watch it, I will let you know. But I just wanted to give you a heads up because I said I would make that announcement a couple days ago and that is it. Uh, working with NBC and Saber Guild to show the, the fun side and the fandom of the Star Wars community. Okay, let's get into it. Rogue One review. This will have spoilers, so if you have not watched the movie, or if you just don't care about my opinion, because I am not a movie critic, you may take off now. So let's start with the difference of Rogue One. It was meant to have somewhat of a different feel. You can notice this in the lack of an opening crawl, and you notice this a little bit in the music. Both of those things I didn't mind at all. I felt they fit the film. It does feel different not having John Williams' score attached to the movie, but overall I didn't think that took anything away. The thing that I did have an issue with was the whole first opening act. I mean like the first few minutes where you're planet jumping and character jumping and everything, it was, uh, it was a bit... Uh, discombobulated for me it was just a little too much over and I was it, I was starting to get my schmies on I was like mm, I don't know if this is gonna work right so that kind of pulled me out of it because you're trying to get a sense of character you're trying to get a sense of where people are at so when it's just jumping back and forth and you can't really get a sense of where a character's at or why they're there it just seems unnecessary and that's how I felt about the whole first act really it just felt uh, really rushed or unnecessary just not connected there was something off there to me once you get past it once all the characters are in the same spot and kind of moving together then the movie just starts flowing to me it, that's when it really started to feel like that Star Wars movie and that you started to really get that journey the movie introduced some good characters I felt most of the characters were all a bit thin they weren't really fleshed out. For certain characters, that's fine. They're there for specific reasons and that's okay. The blind monk and the guardian were probably my favorite characters, along with Kay, the droid, sarcastic droid. These characters, you don't really need a whole lot of meat to them. They're there for kind of a very specific reason. A sarcastic droid is always just fun to have around no matter what. So having a, a very limited backstory for them works fine. However, in more of your main characters, you usually want something a little more. You want to be able to connect with them in a certain way. Uh, my problem with Jin is she felt very flat, very empty as a character. We knew her, like I understood her motivations for the father, seeking her father and trying to do that, but it felt really empty and it didn't, it just didn't connect with me. I just didn't vibe with it. But overall, the characters serve their point. They provide enough that you are still moving with the story. They don't take you out of the story. So again, it's kind of like the music. You're not taken out, or at least I wasn't. I wasn't taken out of the movie. I wasn't taken out of the element. I wasn't taken out of the ride. It could have been better. It could have been worse. It got a good, even ground. So. I still enjoyed the movie. I've been seeing people having issues with the CGI characters. I don't, I didn't have really an issue with them. I didn't feel Leia's scene at the end was fully necessary. I think that the plans could have been handed off and that could have been the end just fine to, to the back, to the white robes. If the plans were handed off, that, that would have been fine. I really liked 
the scene of just the ship taking off anyways. So I didn't mind it. I didn't think it was necessary, but I didn't mind it. It didn't take me out of it. Some people said they were jarred by the CGI. I don't think so. I still remember a Finn from Tron Legacy when they tried that, and the technology's come a long way. We can say that. As for Tarkin, I'm not sure you really needed him as much as they used him in that form. I saw someone suggest that they could use him as kind of like a hologram, like the blue hologram, like always communicating over distance. I think that would have been a great way to go with it. That could have actually worked for a lot of the scenes, and you could have brought him in for some of the more important scenes, such as when he does take over the Death Star and gives the other dude the boot. But again, overall, it didn't take me out of it, it didn't make it better, it didn't make it worse in my opinion. It just, it's there, it's a part of the movie. And it just, it adds to Rogue One. It, it is a part of Rogue One. I don't think it's a detriment. I don't think it goes in the plus or minus column. This brings me to one of the better characters that we know a lot of, and that is Darth Vader. He was certainly shown to be his badass self, his more episode three kind of self, than what we see in A New Hope. That actually took me out of it just a little bit more. I did enjoy the scene at, of him at the end kind of being powerful, crazy, scary Sith Lord. It really made him that villain, and I appreciate that. But at the same time, I was sitting there thinking about the fight with Obi-Wan in Episode 4, A New Hope, and thinking, this doesn't really match up, but that's my thing. Overall, it's, it's great to see Vader being scary and terrifying. That uh, adds to the Star Wars feel, so I, 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 I approve, but it did take me out of it a little bit. What I really did enjoy about Rogue One was the grit there that they showed the rebels as people, that they were fighting a war. And that means getting your hands dirty. And that means sometimes your morals fall into a gray area or you just lose them. You start believing in yourself. It's something we've actually tackled in Jedi, self-righteousness. You start believing because you're on the side of good or light, that your actions, you can do whatever you want. You start justifying your actions. And they show this in the movie, and it's really good that you get this sense that there are good guys and there are bad guys, but they both belong to these different groups. They're not just separated down the line. It's not rebels equal good guys, imperials equal bad guys. That it's humanity, it's, it's, it's being alive, you know? It's all of that, and you really get that sense in the movie, and I think they did a really good job of conveying that, the idea of the human experience and of getting lost and caught up in a cause and losing your way and wanting to make that right in whatever way you can. Even when you're standing for something right, you can go too far and you can do actions that aren't moral or good, very questionable acts. And I think this movie did a great job exploring that didn't provide any answers, it just showed us some characters who are dealing with that. And I like that, I enjoyed that. Rogue One, everyone dies, and that's right for the movie. That, that's totally right, and I appreciated that, actually. I was glad there wasn't any, like, shoehorned in happy ending there. Uh, I felt that's how it had to end, and I think they did a great job in doing it, but it still does not top uh, my, my top Star Wars. So overall, my opinion is Rogue One is definitely worth the ticket. I enjoyed myself in the movie. It wasn't uh, great. It's not on my top Star Wars movie of all time. It's not high up there. It doesn't take over Empire Strikes Back, not even close in my opinion. So if it comes down to it, if we're talking new movies, I like The Force Awakens more than I liked Rogue One. And that's just a difference of character and story and focus. I know that's not probably the popular opinion right now. Rogue One is a good movie. It's a good Star Wars movie. It definitely has a good Star Wars feel to it. I don't think you're going to go there and be disappointed, but I don't view it as the best Star Wars movie, and I personally enjoy The Force Awakens more. So, anyways, I do recommend it. If you can check it out, go check it out. If you haven't already and you watch this for some reason, shame on you, but, you know, go, go have fun, go check it out, and... We should have more videos coming soon. Thank you for watching. May the force be with you.